First Kings chapter 15, verse 23. We studied Asa last night. And the rest of all the acts of Asa, and his might, and all that he did, and the cities which he built, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? Nevertheless, in the time of his old age, he was diseased. That's the first time that shows up in his feet. And Asa slept his fathers, was buried with his fathers in the city of David, his father. And Jehoshaphat, that his son, reigned in the state. Now we read in, in Second Chronicles, he made his own sepulcher. So he's in the same place with his fathers. He's got his own little place. And Nadab, the son of Jeroboam, reign, began to reign over Israel in the second year of Asa. So when Asa's in his second year's reign, Nadab, king of Judah, and re reigned over Israel two years. That's it, two years. He did evil in the sight of the Lord. All the kings in Israel north are going to do evil. They're going to do wicked. Not one king in the north does right. Now there are some kings that do right. Asa did right and got wrong. And walked in the way of his father in his sin wherewith he made Israel to sin. And that's going back to the, the golden calves and religion. You know, the religion, I say religion. Not only the golden calf, but their own priests, their own altar, their own churches. What you see today. And Basha, the son of Ahijah, of the house of Issachar. That's another tribe in Israel up north. Conspired against him. And Basha smote him at Gibbeton, which, is be which belongeth to the Philistines. For Nadab and all Israel laid siege at Gibbeton. So Basha comes and kills Nadab. Now, King Saul dies in battle. King David, he goes off the way of man. He dies natural causes, old age. King Solomon dies of old age. Rehoboam dies. Asa dies of a disease in his feet and, and this old age again. Uh... Rehoboam, Rehoboam or Jeroboam, both of them just died. Here's the first time in the history of the kings of Israel and Judah that there's been a king that has been slain and the throne taken over, and it's happened to the north. Three kings into the worship of those golden calves. And it's funny because I was doing Daniel today in my studies, going back through Daniel. And there are three kings there. And we're into the third king of the Judah with these golden calves. And when you look at a particular hymn, they say, we three kings. That reference is generally in relationship to the Antichrist. We three kings. Smote him at Gibna. Verse 28. Even in the third year of Asa, the king of Judah, did Basha slay him. And reigned in the state. So he took over. The two year reign. Is gone. And it came to pass when he reigned. That he smote him all the house of Jeroboam. Now it says over here. In verse 25. The second year of Asa king of Judah. Nadab began to reign. It says even the third year. Did the king of Judah. Uh, did Basha slay him and reign. So. What we have here is, that's only one year. And it says 25, he reigned two years. That would be the fourth year of King Asa. 28 says the third year. Well, maybe it took half a year, but maybe it took, it, maybe the death was not immediate. May it carried out. Uh, I'm trying to think, you know. Today, you know, a disease, when you are carried out with a disease or wound, doesn't mean you're going to die right away. And it came to pass when he reigned that he smote all the house of Jeroboam. He left not to Jeroboam any that breathe. So if you breathe, you're dead. You won't be breathing. Until he destroyed him, according to the saying of the Lord. Now, the saying of the Lord, First Kings 14.10. 1 Kings 14.10. Let's see what the Lord said. Because we're going to see fulfillment of prophecy. 
And when we see the fulfillment of prophecy, when we look at 48 prophecies of the first advent of Jesus Christ, I'm told of, and they're all fulfilled, well, there are tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of prophecy in the Bible within two or three chapters, within two or three books, within two or three years or 300 years. Prophecy is being fulfilled. This ain't go to a tent at the flea market and have her read your palm, your tea leaves, smack you in the head to read the bumps in your head or anything like that. Because it's so general. Let's look at what God said here. 14.10 Therefore, behold, I will bring upon I will bring evil upon the house of Jeroboam. And that's what we're talking about, Jeroboam. And will cut off from Jeroboam him that pisses against the wall. And him that is shut up. We thought he's, you know, they're homebound, they can't get out, locked up, left in Israel, and will take away the remnant of the house of Jeroboam as a man take away dung till it be all gone. Him that dies in Jeroboam in the city shall the dogs eat. Him that dies in the field shall the fowls of the air eat. For the Lord has spoken it. Arise thou, and he's talking to his wife, get thee to out, and then your son's going to die once you get in the city. So over here now, in 15, verse 29, And it came to pass when he reigned that he smote all the house of Jeroboam. That's a prophecy. Everyone that Hey, listen, if you're shut up in the house, even if you're out in the field, or you're in the city, all the house of Jeroboam, he left not to Jeroboam any that breathed, until he had destroyed him, according to the saying of the Lord, which spanked by the servant, Ahijah, the Shilhonite. So here is a king on the throne, he's killed. His family's killed. And God had already prophesied that was going to happen. Why? Because of the sin that he made Israel to sin. And anger God enough that, hey, listen, your children are going to keep it. And the commandment is very simple. Let's go to Exodus 20. And this is the warning. And the law says, the son shall not be charged, put to death with the father, and the father shall not be put to death with the children. Every man shall be for his own sin. I'm not quoting that verse completely. But, what I do, my son is not going to be charged to what I do and what my son has done. Thank God I have not been charged. But when we see Exodus 20 and verse 5, the context of the golden calves, thou shalt not bow thyself to them. Well, wait a minute, let's go. Let's not be Catholics here. Let's read verse 4 too, which is missing out of the Catholic Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not make unto thee a graven image. You mean a cow? An image, that's a picture. You mean a, guy that, a cow that can't spell chicken? Or any likeness of anything. You mean Mary? On a seashell? Or the likeness of anything that is in heaven or above. You mean stars, moon, planets? Or that's in the earth beneath. Worms? Monkeys, worms, I already said that. Or that's in the waters under the earth, whales, fishies. You mean, I'm not to make an image of a fish and call it Christ? Or a Christian? You mean that is idolatry, imagery? And how many Christians have that on their car and they don't even realize they're violating the second commandment? Thou shalt not bow thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, and visiting the iniquity on the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Jeroboam, you hate me. Nadab, you hate me. Now, why does the scripture say the son should not be charged for the father, and the father should not be charged to the to the child, and yet this verse says, upon the fathers and upon the children. I'll tell you exactly what that means. I grew up in that. As the fact is the Christian, as the Catholic assembly, as the Mormon, whatever they call themselves, as a Jehovah Witness, the religion that your parents grew up in is the religion you're brought up in. And so, I was given a time in life, I forget, I was a, 
I don't even think I was a teenager yet. I was getting a point in time and said, listen, do you want to go to church with Grandpa anymore? And I was like, no, I don't. And that moment I said, listen, I want to depart from that. But that was the religion of my grandpa. And had I stayed in that religion and died and gone to hell, it was my grandpa that kept bringing me there. Now he's saved and, and going, he's saved and in heaven today by the blood of Jesus Christ. He's no more than his cabin. But what's going on with Nadab, with that verse? Jeroboam brought him up in the worship of the golden arches. I mean, calves. Taught him what to do. Taught him how to do it. He watched his father do and, and seen how things are done. So now that he's king, now that he's grown up, he's carried on with his father. And it says in verse 26, And he did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of his father. His father taught him. And at that point where your father, your mother, your grandparents, or your great grand, whoever has taught you the religion that defiles God, at that point will that be charged to you. And it doesn't have to be a religion either. Today, we got parents raising children to be wild and crazy and druggy and alcoholics and everything against the law. They're being raised that cops are bad, school is terrible, and you just hate everybody because somebody lives, somebody lies. Mother, father, you're going to be charged for what you raised that child instead of Jesus Christ. And a lot of times when I'm on the street and I'll see parents or I hope the parents somebody with a young child I will raise up the fact is the Bible and Jesus said suffer the little children come on to me parents it's your job to bring them to Jesus in order for you to bring them to Jesus you've got to know Jesus Nadab and Jeroboam had no excuses all they had to do is make a trip down to Jerusalem and they would have been brought to the facts of life so verse 29, it came to pass when he reigned that he smote all the house of Jeroboam. Because everybody was inv involved in the family worship, the family religion. He left not of Jeroboam any that breathed until he had destroyed him. According to the saying of the Lord, which he spanked by his servant, Ahijah the Surlite. Because the sins of Jeroboam, which he sinned, there it is. The golden calf religion has been passed the son has, and we're going to see it. it's going to be through all the kings of Israel it will not leave as one particular church as one particular religion they're brought on because the grandparents brought up their children their children now parents brought up their children in it and their children is going to bring up their children and their children are going to bring up their children that's the charge because of the sins of Jeroboam, which he sinned. Fathers, you need to realize, saved or lost. When you stand before the judgment seat of, I mean, when you stand the great white throne judgment or the judgment seat of Christ. Whether you're saved or lost. That Bible is going to hold you accountable to, as a husband to your wife. And as a father to your children. The Bible says, if the wife has a question, she's supposed to go to her husband. Not to the church, not to the pastor. You are supposed to be. The Bible speaks through the Old Testament. The fathers are to bring up the, the history of, the, of their, their, their beliefs of the, for the Jews, God, the history of Exodus, the history of their fathers. The fathers are supposed to teach the children. Fathers are going to be, and husbands are going to be, held for great accountability. Because the sins of Jeroboam, which he sinned, in which he made Israel sin. That's north. So not only is it his household, but his country, in which he made Israel to sin by his provocation that is excite to anger. That's the first time that word shows up, provocation. Wherein he provoked the Lord God to Israel to anger. All right, now let's look at this verse for a moment. Because the sins of Jeroboam, which he sinned, which he made Israel sin, by his provocation, excite to anger, wherein he provoked the Lord God of Israel to anger. Now let's look at this for a minute. Let's look at what God got mad at Jeroboam for. Golden calves. His own priests that were not authorized by God. Having feast days that were not authorized by God. Assembling the people not to the authorized God. 
Huh? His own altar. High places. Uh, roads. Idols. And when you deal with a Roman Catholic family or a Catholic friend that you have, you got to show them and say, listen, look at this. The thing that you are in is provoking God to provocation of anger. And this is B.C. 951. This is, by the day, at least 950 years before Jesus is even born. Never mind to say that you have a church built upon Jesus. You have a church that's built upon Old Testament philosophy. False religion. False religion. The cow. Do you know that the cow is a sexual worship as much as Esther with the boobies? What is it about the cow? It's got milk and can be, become beef. It was something that Aaron worshipped and made with the people and they ate, drank, and played and had a good kumbaya. It was the Egyptian god. It's in. Uh, there's a cow god for many of all. India. They are a starving nation that needs food, and yet the golden calves are walking all around. I said one time, I got a letter one time, and the man, oh, help these people in India. They're starving. And listen, I'm going to help missionaries. I ain't good. I sent the letter back because they had a picture of the little child there. He got flies all over. In the background, there were cows. So I, I circled the cows in the picture and sent it back. I said, why don't you kill those cows and feed the children? I know why they don't. Because that's grandma, grandpa, and whoever's died in the family. But you need to realize what we read in Exodus 2, Exodus, that's removed from the Ten Commandments of the Catholic Church. Just because you erase it, doesn't make, oh, God's like, oh, sorry. It wasn't there. And that we see the Catholic Church. We see that the Mormon Church, they got these golden plates. Did you hear what I said? They've got these golden plates that are locked up somewhere. If there are even golden, but no one's ever seen them. Golden plates. There is, in mythology, a golden fleece that comes from a, a ram, which I would believe is also the sheep family. And all these religions are all tangled in one big mess. And yet Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the light. And you need to show these verses because the first thing, when you dress in a Catholic friend and say, okay, when did your universal worldwide church start? And they'll say, we are founded upon Jesus and the apostles. Peter? Yeah, Peter's our first pope, really. Don't go fighting them. And you go back to the first kings, you read what Jeroboam did, his own priests, his own altars, incense, holidays. Say, doesn't that sound familiar? Doesn't that sound, don't you have special holidays, Lent, Ash Wednesday? Don't you have altars where if you're a good Catholic, you can get married at that altar and blah, 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 isn't it? Don't you have grow up? And they cannot lie and say no. And they would have to acknowledge that, yeah, that looks like our church. Okay, now you, you've got them hook, line, and sinker. Run over here and say, God of Israel, that's the God that we worship, is provoked to provocation and anger of what you just said is so. And by the way, it's 951 years before away in the manger. It's 950 years before little town of Bethlehem. The Catholic Church teaches are not A.D. They are not founded upon the apostles and Christ. They are founded upon false worship that makes God angry. And just because you remove one commandment from ten and break ten into two, that's how they do it. They don't want you to know about the idols and imageries of the Bible. So keep the Bible closed and let your priests and your popes and your cardinals teach you the tradition do you know what do you know what birds are in the bible a type of devils 
There was a bird that went out and ate the seed. Jesus, can you explain that parable to us? The devil went out and snatched the seeds. Mark chapter 4. And when you look at that assembly and what Jeroboam has done is match religions and not just Catholics. God's, the Bible, the Holy Spirit says, look at what he said. Because of the sins of Jeroboam, which he sinned, it's a sin to be in a religion and which he made Israel's, you're making your family, you're making people around you sin. By his provocation that is to excite anger, wherewith he provoked the Lord God of Israel to anger. And that's passed on to his son. And did not Jesus say, Woe unto you that, that offend the little children? It would be better for you to tie a millstone about your neck and be cast in the ocean? How many children have been perverted or in hell today because their parents and grandparents and great-grandparents had brought them up into the one great religion? Whatever it be. I'm talking about just as much as the India in India. I'm talking much as the Mormon in Mormonism. I'm talking about all the religions that bring up their children and keep them in that religion. And Jeroboam was the founder of that religion. We've already looked at it. Go back to the videos. Go back to the oil. And look at Jeroboam starting that. So Jeroboam would be a type of the Pope. He has begun a religion. We have passed it on to the priest. We have passed it on to his sons. And God says, I'm angry. And for the angriness that I have, I am going to destroy your seed. I am going to destroy your entire family, Jeroboam. And it has happened. That's remarkable. It says in 25, Nadab, the son of Jeroboam, began to reign. So Jeroboam and then his son. There wasn't even one throne, one reign. That God said, okay, here I go. I'm passing judgment. Now the rest of the acts of Nadab and all that he did, are they not written in the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? We'll look at it when we get there. There was war between Asa and Basa, the king of Israel, all their days of civil war. What did Jeroboam and Rehoboam bring about in that this wars? We're better than you. No, we're better than you. We've got the temple. Well, look what we got over here. It broke it up. In the third year of Asa, king of Judah, began Basha, the son of Ahijah, so, here's another reign. It's not the family of Jeroboam. Jeroboam was, uh, uh, let's see, get back over to, where is that? Jeroboam, the prophecy. Uh, chapter 11, verse 26. So we can see the family of Jeroboam. Uh, I was going to say Jeroboam 11.20. First Kings 11.26. And Jeroboam the son of Nebat, an Ephraimite of Zerda. Now come back over here to 27, verse 27 to verse 15. Basha the son of Ahijah of the house of Issachar. And when we come across and there was war, I mean, verse 33. The third year of Asa the king of Judah be began Basha the son of Ahijah to reign, we got a whole different tribe now. God never acknowledged Ephraim. God never acknowledged Issachar as the reigning kings of Jesus Christ, but Judah. Began Mesa the son of Ahijah to reign over all Israel and Tarzah, that's where he made the capital, 20 and 4 years. That's a lot of years, 24 years. And he did evil. <laughs> it don't stop. He did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the ways of Jeroboam. Come on, what are you doing? You just destroyed Jeroboam because of his sin, and then you pick it up. And in his sin, where he made Israel this very same thing. And where do you think he's going to go? 
So here's a guy who's done what a prophet's told him to do. Oh, he's going to turn out great and everything's going to be wonderful. No. He's still got the church of the golden calves. He's still got false priests. There's a bunch of dead men in hell.